reliable mm. power means like above eight hours a day or more right so the ones that have mm. reliable power are just epileptic it's like <laughs> it's it just the power just goes on for another but at least they get more than eight hours but it goes off for the Yes, what's good? Yo, yo, yo. How you feeling? I'm alright, I'm here. How you feeling? I heard, I heard you're living the best life in Lagos right now. Oh, I'm enjoying myself, you know. You're going, making money. Going through a transition. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good, that's I good. see money, definitely. I that's see money good, in Lagos, good. 100%. Yeah, yeah there, man. There is, man. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. How have you been? Nah, I've been good, I've been good. I've just been, uh, yeah, figuring out a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, You know what I'm thinking? Mean, I'm in this process in life right now where, like, I'm trying to take care of what i have it's acquiring new things okay you know, so i'm just like a me- it's like a mindset it's like okay normally we're always in like that consumer mindset like okay let's go and buy a new thing let's go and take this let's go and get new da, da, da. Mm-hmm. But it's like mm-hmm. we have a lot of things already what happens when you invest in those things that you already have when you take care of them okay so, give, so, me, I mean, give like, me one example one example is like just where i live right now i'm just mm-hmm. doing a lot of interior decoration okay just maintaining it mm-hmm. uh my car's Doing that as well, okay. taking care of them, doing more servicing, doing more upgrades, doing a lot of stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, relationships, in, calling my friends up, yeah, inviting them to places, yeah, uh, yeah. getting them stuff, and mm-hmm. just just taking care of what I currently what have. What you got me? But you, you, I see you every day, every <laughs> weekend, nigga. <laughs> getting them stuff, nigga. What you got me? <laughs> <laughs> I see you every week. No, no, no. But you know, I always. Take I'm care joking. Of you, like, he literally it's, it's, looks. He takes such good care of me. Yeah, literally, yeah, like priceless. literally such good care of me. So yeah. Priceless. So so um, so yeah. Um. Yeah. That's what I'm. I'm focusing on that right now. Maybe next year, I might have to change things a little bit. But mm-hmm. right now, I'm trying to enjoy that process of of. of Take your I hear you. I have the same mindset now. I'm like, yeah, especially when you know when you're so driven and so mm. ambitious and you feel like, you know, you know where you're meant to be. Mm. Like you definitely get focused on the future too much. So I hear you. Like right now, I'm like, okay, this is like a phase right now. Enjoy the phase. You always try to teach me this as well. Mm. Like just be patient and enjoy the process. So yeah, I hear you on that. Um I hear you on that, but boy, hmm. I know what I'm getting when <laughs> when, the, when, the, when, the, when when the bag hits. <laughs> I know. I remember you're coming, you're like, oh, that's my car. And yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I already know what the driveway, the line of the driveway is going to look like. Aye. Literally. Um, I know what gifts I'm getting people. Jeez. I know everything. That's so, good. yeah, it's just, it's just, um, I think as long as you see progress, mm. then it's okay. Yeah. 100%. And progress is hard to measure, but like, you will see it around you. People mm-hmm. tell you, people even treat you differently. True. Like, and then you know you're making progress. True. Yeah. So you just got to just be in that moment and just like bust mm-hmm. it all in and, and keep it going. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's that's really where we How are right now. How are the ladies? <laughs> but you know, so I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually like, I'm actually in a relationship right now. <laughs> just, just, just go put it out there. So ladies, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am gone. <laughs> I'm not coming back to the streets. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, but that, that's that's about it, really. That's about it, really. Yeah. Right. Shout out to my exes, though. <laughs> <laughs> they made you the man you are today. Exactly, right? Go give them, a, give them. I can't some say attention. the same for myself, but we move. Really, mm. you've gone through some dragons. <laughs> Maybe I am the dragon. <laughs> Oh man, no, that's no do you know what? I add value, so yeah. Like I know that's the one thing everybody yeah. can say about me. I add a lot of that's value. That's another thing that so. in, in life in general, whatever yeah. room you step into, yeah. relationships, mm-hmm. business partnership, whatever, you just add value. No, by the time I've left you, you'll definitely be up. Better, but yeah. the problem is, can I say the same thing the other way around? So like, you, like, you teach me OQP. I need to choose better people. <laughs> choose better people, and uh, you people to even lift you up. Not like mm-hmm. you're just every day lifting people up. Man. That's, that's yeah, to, yeah. No more life coach kind of services. Back and forth, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, that's what it really is. Yeah, man. And and how's um 
kind of how's how's business in nigeria business hundred yeah. percent so like obviously at my excel master i've been doing more valuation work nice. working with companies in different industries and one thing i can say like e-commerce space is buzzing at the moment okay. literally and um yeah it's been exciting times you know exciting times and i think one thing i've learned so far in the process with the type of the clients i've had the biggest um common factor is a lot of them started manually mm. and then eventually became more tech savvy within the operations oh interesting. so for example i know some businesses that are like seed round already and things mm. like that even almost preparing for series a and the way they started their business they were running it from google sheets no nah. no app no nothing literally and so i'm noticing that in, especially in africa it mm. tends to be like a trend and it goes back there's a common book that everyone talks about the lean startup mm. and things like that yeah but i think in this terrain the one common factor i've had is they definitely start like offline or they start very kind Crude. of very yeah mm. and then they build up the services whereas sometimes some of us yeah like to go and straight away go and spend Into hella money books. on an app yeah 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 all, yeah, all, yeah, all, all, yeah. All, those, all those fancy stuff mm -hmm. yeah no no but yeah. that, that's the best way to build stuff you know because mm -hmm. i think the, the beginning stage yeah there's a lot of unforeseen expenses so you want to minimize those costs as possible right so you want to choose MVP, like your most minimum viable product, minimum viable solutions for certain things. And yeah. just like stick to those areas. 100%. And then as you go, as you build more wealth, then you help to acquire those things. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, you spend all your all your money raising and yeah. then you go and spend on like, on all these biggest softwares and all these things. Hundred percent. When your yeah. business is still yet to prove itself, right? So hundred, hundred percent. And I think that's the biggest thing, like you know, that I've learned working with all these founders. The mm. most important thing is traction, mm. because when you've got traction, but your operations are a bit higgy hagga, the money's still coming to you, boy. Yeah. So all you need you to do optimize. is just optimize, yeah. and that's what I do for them. Just help them kind of clean things up, etc. Mm. But then, like for other cases where everything looks shiny on the outside, mm. but you've literally got no customers, or mm. you've got no like, who's checking for you? Facts. Because right. Investors actually want to see what are the numbers yeah. and what's the potential numbers. So yeah, uh, it's, it's it's good. I'm honestly, this place is so inspiring. Nigerians are just so damn smart. Mm, the brains so are the brains are low. Smart. There's a lot of brains here. Can we, can we get AC up here because it's it's kind of like doctor's hot in the studio hot, right man, now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm hot, but like it's <laughs> <laughs> it's hot right here. It's a thunderstorm over here as well, man. Yeah, there's, there's, the there's, 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 oh the rain in Nigeria, man. God's crazy. The, the, God doesn't roads. seem too happy with us at the moment. You know what? Globally, man, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, man. Mm. I just feel, I feel like at this point in time in life mm -hmm, right now, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. The mm -hmm. Queen passing away, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. new Prime Minister in the UK. Mm -hmm. There's different issues in Nigeria, government uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot right oh, now. Man. So I think if you want to make any change to your life, just hold on a little bit because a lot of change is happening. I feel like it's going to get really good very soon and just... Hold on these times. Hundred percent. But you know what? Yeah. Do you what? know what I got told this week? What happened? Pound is eight two five. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every every year, yeah, you're earning higher in Nigeria. You're getting they're getting significantly more poor. <laughs> This, no, but literally, if pound is eight two five, do you know what that means? Mm. Since Bahari came in, I think he was around four hundred. It's literally a hundred percent less. Yes. Wow. That's like that's on some Zimbabwe movement, you know. It's actually mad. So obviously. That's another thing. I just thank God. Yeah, just start to just think about making sure you still got pounds and dollars coming in. Or well, one advice I got this week was like, literally, even when you earn Naira, just change it straight to dollars. Change, yeah, change it straight to dollars. There's you know? some apps that do that. I yeah. Shout out to those apps that do that. that I can't yeah. remember. I know there's some apps that actually Yeah, Lemonade do that Finance, some others. Yeah. Exactly. You, you need to you need to always keep your money in a stable currency because that is very serious. Mm -hmm. um, like even me right now, all of our business strategies, ideas, we just, chasing a different currency man we don't really chase naira that's what i'm saying because it's just like he's like when you get it what do you do yeah i just keep naira is for naira spending yeah it's for like it's a operation day-to-day -day stuff that's exactly how i look but at it. when it comes to investment uh more strategic movements you, you have to think in dollars man yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah mm. and even now and another thing is the pound is literally at the lowest level since 1985 to the dollar wow it's almost i checked the other day i almost screamed. one to one in it <laughs> I felt one time somebody exchanged it one to one. Even so, we've got a double hit. Yeah, yeah because literally, I I bought something in dollars maybe like a couple months ago, and it was one point one two. It was one point two one, and I was already vexing. Like, are you actually mad? So, like now it's all, it's one point one something. Mm. So, that means we've lost on both sides. On both we've sides, lost yeah. on pounds, and, and we've lost. lost. So, the dollar is becoming like the currency of the mm. of the of the year. But that's why I like um, in Nigeria that we do do dollar and naira. No, Not Africa really is more dollar naira, centric. Yeah, 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 yeah. Africa as, as a whole. I mean, in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Dollar is the adopted currency. Mm, yeah, I've, I've noticed that. Um, 
Africa's more dollar centric, but it's just that like the pound used was literally historically the strongest Western currency mm. for so long. Apart from like three Middle Eastern ones, it's yeah. the strongest currency. So like it's now come on its knees. As um, a, yeah, as yeah, a currency. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, no, no, no. That's actually very interesting. Mm. No, I, I mean, I, this current situation, right? I really hope it gets better, you know, because like it's mentally challenging. It's like another mental will, block. I, I don't think, it's very rare that you see currencies, especially African ones, get stronger. Has it ever happened before? Did you have um, I haven't got any information, so maybe I'll come back and on on that. Yeah. Um, I don't have I don't have any kind of like historical case studies where I've seen an African con- currency over extended piece of time. For that to happen, you need to have increased like your trade and mm. and your exports significantly, or, yeah, significantly yeah, yeah. over a sustained period of time. So I don't have any case studies. I know where they've kept it strong, mm. but even the ones I've kept it strong, look at Ghana. Another thing that's really like worrying me or that really pissed me off, I would say, yeah, about this whole Nigeria situation was mm-hmm. when the um there was the issue in or current it's still current and going issue in Russia mm-hmm. and Ukraine, mm-hmm. Russia decided to kind of limit a lot of gas and, and oil supply Big to deal. certain areas. But Nigeria couldn't leverage that opportunity to export more oil and gas. So there were talks with um, Nigeria, Morocco and uh, a couple others to have like a gas pipeline through the Sahara and things like that. So the opportunity, so what you just said is true. And it did open up some doors for countries like Algeria, Morocco, Mm -hmm. Nigeria. I don't know if they've closed um, the deal on that. Um, However, yeah, you're right. I mean, if we were prepared already, we could have leveraged. We could have leveraged on that because... I even I, I'm even aware there, there was even a time where there was actually a limit mm. on how much we can export. They actually set a limit for the OPEC, right? Because obviously we're part of OPEC. What's wrong with this? Uh, what's wrong? What's... And there was even a limit. So because of that, it's like okay, if you had a limit before, now you have a need where the, the, all the European countries are saying, "Listen, guys, we need your oil and gas. Like, okay, come on, I give got... it to us. Russia is not giving it to us anymore. We need that stuff, 100%. and we can't meet that." I've got some questions. I want you to break some things down to me in baby terms. Sure. Um, Because this is probably one sector that I'm really not so well versed on. So first of all, gas. What is gas used for? So gas is is used for a lot of things. Majority is production of electricity. So Mm. gas gas is... um, So oil is like crude oil, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of... It's a little bit more darker and and you can refine it to get different um, um, components. So like, like... like you can get kerosene, you can get uh, petrol, mm. you can get all these things from oil, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then gas, right? So currently the most known gas is liquefied na- uh, natural mm, gas. LPG, I've seen uh, that. Yeah, no, liquefied no, petroleum yeah, gas. Yeah. Yeah, that's LNG and the liquefied petroleum gas. It's roughly the same thing. Mm-hmm. So basically what that is useful is like, you've got, there's gas turbines, right? Okay. In different countries, right? So you they normally export these in pipelines in different countries. Mm-hmm. They save them in the gas cylinder and then, or, or they can actually directly put it into these uh, gas turbines. Mm-hmm. The gas turbines now fire up so you kind of get combustion. Okay. And that provides electricity to like a bunch of people, right? But also, they, they also use it for heating. So if you look mm. at the boilers in the UK, all those boilers that we have over there, all gas boilers, mm. they're literally from uh, natural gas, mm. right? So heating and electricity can be provided for gas. And gas is the cheapest for now, right? It is the cheapest level of energy mm-hmm. that you can get. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, I I got so many questions for you now. I'm, I'm excited. Literally, so 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 in the, in the UK, I think gas is like two p or three p uh, per kilo hour. That's what the best measurement at the time. But that's literally the, the price. And the electricity is like almost eighteen, nineteen p. Now it's almost twenty p. Now it's gone crazy. So when we were in school, they taught us gas was like something from the air, but mm. it's a liquefied gas. How does yeah, that work? so so they, they compress it. Okay. So when you compress gas, it turns mm-hmm. into a liquid. So if you look at, let's say for example, this people that use gas in their homes, right? Mm-hmm. They've got this gas cylinder, mm-hmm. right? And then they've got, um, then you can literally, if you feel it, you can, people shake it and they're like, oh, there's still gas in the air. It's not mm. because when it comes out in the air, obviously it's kind of in, in a more mm-hmm. um, atmospheric condition. The pressure's lower, mm-hmm. right? So then it turns, it turns to, to more a g- gaseous state. Yeah. But when it's compressed, it's literally liquid. So you can then export it and, tra- and move it around. It's much more mm. easier to handle when it's kind of in a liquid form. And how do the pipelines work? Because that must take so long to, to even build or like... Yeah, so pipelines are so interesting because if you look at if you look at pipelines in the world, right, there's literally, there's literally, pipelines is about half the distance in terms of um, half, in if you total length of pipeline in the world, it's mm-hmm. about half that of road networks in the world. 
can tell how much gas and I oil is moving imagine. around. Right? A lot of gas and oil is moving around the world. Um, and and they they have like cubic feet of significant uh, magnitude of like gas and oil yeah. moving through these pipelines. So there's a distribution network on gas lines, right? Mm. You know, you've got like from the from the way it's kind of being refined and 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 sourced. Mm-hmm. There's like huge up um, like circumferences uh, pipes that just just sending gas and oil through these networks, and mm-hmm. then it goes to a distribution network where it distributes it to certain areas, and they can store it and use it. So wow. the UK is very similar, right? And the electricity network also has the same thing where you have got like a distribution transmission mm. side of thing and distribution. So no gas gas is gas pipelines are actually a lot in a lot of places that so we don't even know about. Are they above or below? The ground. Or, or below the ground. Below the ground. Um, there are some that are above, but it's more when it comes to storage, right? So I think mm. when you get to the point where you're storing it, in the they move big it, tanks. Yeah, then they move it above the ground. But mm. the majority of the time it's below the ground. It's safer mm. um and just kind of less tampered with and stuff like that. I mean, but it, there's some we've been hearing about people hacking pipelines in some of these regions, right? In Africa. Oh, definitely in the, yeah, definitely. So some people actually go there to kind of like cut these pipelines and, and get some of these things out and then trade in the back market it's quite crazy do you know what the material is made of like the pipeline is what material it's made of the pipeline i can't remember and i wouldn't know too much but it definitely a company of different materials so Mm. you want it to be anti-rust exactly yeah yeah it's a company of different materials but i wouldn't know exactly what it's made of so then when you said distribution Mm. is it like that's what they call the grid or what's the grid so so there's the gas grid okay for for established countries like the uk where the gas goes to each individual homes. Okay. Right? So you've got a grid network on the gas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in Nigeria, uh, there's, there's probably a, a gas grid, but it's more in the refinery areas until it gets to storage. And then it's, the grid stops there and then somebody then puts it into a tank and travel and transport somewhere else. Wow. Right? So there's a grid for both gas and electricity. In Nigeria, electricity grid is actually much more uh, compl- complicated. Mm. Right? Because like you're dealing with things that you can't see. You can't really see electricity. Mm. But you can't kind of smell it. Like it just kind of moves through wires. Mm. So it's a bit more compli- complex, but it's still very, uh, very interesting. Like when you mm. think about how, how we get electricity at home, mm-hmm. um, it's actually mind blowing when you really think about it because somewhere so- somewhere in the middle of like Bono State or um, Ocean State, you might have a big turbine or big um, uh, dam mm-hmm. producing electricity. And that electricity get to your house and you might be in Lagos or somewhere else in less than a day that same electricity that was produced somewhere else like look how fast it actually moves wow. so it's when you think about electricity it's, it's absolutely crazy but so to understand like I know that in Nigeria we still have like a huge electricity problem it's because the solution is not that easy okay what are power lines? Mm. You know, because you know sometimes when you go to our out of our states, you see power lines. Mm. You know, so the ones that kind of fall down and things like that. Is that what electricity moves through? Yeah. Or... So, so it, that it, power lines are really, really cool in in the kind of the fundamental term, the transmission networks. Okay. Right. So you, in, in in the electricity grid, there's like three stages. There's the generation stage, where en- mm. energy is actually being uh, created or converted to electricity, right? And then you've got the transmission stage mm-hmm. and then you've got the distribution stage and then you and then obviously the, the home is there mm-hmm. so in the transmission stage that's the big pylons you see those those power lines mm. called pylons, right mm-hmm. so they take roughly in they they send electricity in like kilovolts kilovolts literally like high voltage electricity wow right? if, you, if you literally touch it you could die like wow. die like there's no you're never coming you know like the electric shock that you get at home <laughs> this 240 volts where you're just chilling no no, no. it's like <laughs> That is like some serious high voltage. So they have mm. to send it in big fat wires. Some of the wires are literally like mm. that big when you cut it in uh, from a sectional point of view. And it's literally sent in miles and miles away. Um, so you, they range between like 33 kilovolts, like 11 kilovolts. And wow. they send electricity all the way home, all the way to people's homes. Well, to, to a transformer. Mm-hmm. But that's what it's transformer, substations. And then that converts into a smaller voltage, yeah. I guess, to your home. So that's the distribution line in the network, yeah. So the, the money you said, okay, it's not easy in Nigeria then. Is it related to the power lines or what else is it? What else mm. is it? So so just from a statistics point of view, like we know currently 85 million Nigerians literally do not have a, access to electricity. That's right? almost half. That's half. That's almost half Nigerians. Yeah. Right? And then the other half that do, let's say the, the rest, um, 110, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. 110 million. They ask for about 40% of them don't have reliable power. Reliable power mm. means like above eight hours a day. Oh, 
Mm. Right? So the ones that have mm. reliable power are just epileptic. It's like, <laughs> it, it, it's just, the power just goes on off on another, but at least they get more than eight hours, but it goes off on another. Yeah. So there's a huge, like, problem. There's a, there's a four-step problem to solve. There's like, people who don't have energy at all. Mm. There are people who have energy and they don't get enough. And people mm. who have enough energy and just up and down. Mm-hmm. so there's it's literally the whole value chain is has problems mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they needs to be solved one after the other so there's different companies that i know out there okay. i mean Pan africa for example we do kind of the whole value chain where amazing. we want to solve the whole problem amazing but there are other companies who do just specifically choose one of those areas and they have solutions for them yeah um and and just to kind of give you the kind of the, the, the mind-bending facts is if you provide electricity for rural communities right a lot of the time the women in rural communities, right, spend more of their time sourcing for power. I'll give you an example what that means. They, mm. Like 80 to 90% of their time sourcing for power and the rest is just like food and maintaining the house. Mm. So imagine the time they can spend in education, spend in other areas instead of finding ways to get power. What does that mean? They go to the um, to the forest and the bushes to get firewood. To, they take spend their time um, cutting it down bringing wow. it back home putting it into their stove Sad. putting wow. it into the, all these different things to, to make sure that they can have like fire which is Sad. energy right yeah so there's a lot of um kind of the gender side of things that actually affects power not just yeah because um, um yeah so basically um, i i met one guy he lived on Tarqua Bay, mm. and because you know some of these beaches they have those kind of rural communities yeah, that live yeah. on the island so what he told me was as a kid he used to because they're near where they drill oil mm. i think um he in the night he would go there and in a boat and he would use take the kegs and stuff mm. And fill the boat with all that oil. kind of kerosene mm. and oil, and I don't know the exact what exactly he was. And he just used to tell me you would then you'll now bring it back to the island mm. to distribute it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, 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 I mean, like power is is literally one of the biggest currency in the world. Wow. If you really think about electricity and oil and gas, it literally mm-hmm. is literally currency. Mm. The dollar is backed by petrol, it's called the petrol dollar, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah, backed yeah, by yeah, petrol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of old anything you see, if if the price for electricity changes today, mm-hmm. price for everything else changes. Yeah. So it's literally it's like currency We're that you can't it now. see. It's yeah. like in the UK, mm-hmm. you're seeing like prices of electricity shoot Times up. Times three for everybody over is, there is because price of and food and everything is going up because of that reason. So mm. the if you really look at it, energy controls the world. I I think right now we're seeing it firsthand. You're right. 100%. Energy controls the world, and it's important that. Africa really gets more energy independent, mm-hmm. right? They're trying to find a way to reduce the cost for energy mm-hmm. and people should have energy, like access. People should get energy. Okay. Aside from oil, mm. what are some energy advantages that we have in terms mm. of resources? We, we, we may not be using it properly yet, but what are the advantages that some of us have in Africa? No, I think when it comes to the av- advantages of, of uh, producing energy in Africa, mm. it's huge. Okay. It's absolutely huge. But what is the reason why we still don't have energy? Is because affordability seems to be a very big problem. Hmm. So right now, let's say you you have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I want Amen. to give my village, which you do. Right? <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> right? I want to give my village here mm-hmm. or home here. I want to give them a lot of electricity, right? Mm-hmm. I come to you and say, hey, uh, hey, S, give me uh, $2 million. Let me go and find, give people electricity. Mm-hmm. You say, okay, I, w- I would like a 10% return on my investment. That's at least, okay. that's that's fair. That's fine. All right? yeah. I mean, compared to an average investment in anything, mm-hmm. 10% is, is, is good. No, it's good, yeah. So you, I take the money from you and I go to this rural community now or, or uh, these people who have never had electricity before and I give them electricity. Wow. Guess what they will use electricity to do? Put the lights on, watch TV. Mm, they, not productive not productive okay. so they don't end up using the electricity to figure out how to make money and then they end up kind of affording it because they can't pay the bills so now Ooh. my investment is now in the thin air so you're not especially me like Patrick where's my money back I'm like these people can't even pay for that stuff right so that's one perspective now some people actually think electricity is like air it's be free <laughs> I swear to God, some of communities that I deal with, like they really feel electricity. So it's an like education air. thing as well it's as... It's an education thing. So when we're going to these communities to provide electricity, right, we actually go there and have to redesign the community. Mm. 
Do you understand? So mm. we have to go there and there's something we call, it's called productive use of energy. Okay. That's literally, it's, it's an actual term. Mm-hmm. And it's called rural industrialization. Yeah. So what that means is we go to rural communities and mm-hmm. industrialize those areas. Mm. We say, okay, look, hi guys, we've designed this business in a box mm. that uses energy. So please take this stuff and make some money so you can pay for the energy. So the more people can get energy, Love right? That. Because yeah. don't go and take the energy and then watch TV and watch like Watching and then... BBN, Niger. Yeah. <laughs> BBN. <laughs> Honestly, I was so shocked when I went to my, my village yeah, and I saw people watching BBN, Niger and the small TV in the living room. I so was you, shocked. You, you have to go there and actually bring them out of out of poverty yeah like physically so mentally can, and, physically. and physically so they mm. can actually afford electricity hmm. that's, that's a business opportunity on its own because it's, it's another huge. aspect of education and yeah. training regarding that um that's insane it's absolutely insane. so then what kind of things would you want them to use it for like give me an example like if you had a community that has yeah. a certain type of resources what okay. would you want them to do so so we i mean Pam Africa, we, we invented, because mm-hmm. I spend most of my time on innovation, inventing stuff to Amazing. make Africa prosper, right? Amazing. And I believe in, there's a book, there's a very good book called, um, by Efosa or Jomo, mm-hmm. and then he talked about um, bringing nations out of poverty. Mm. Uh, I can't remember the title, but, but it's, I think, bring nations out of poverty, if you Google Efosa, you should find him. Mm-hmm. And he said that innovation is the only way that you can get people out of poverty. So when we go ahead, we actually think about those communities, understand them. It's like it's like a consultancy. You have to go there, assess the communities. Okay, you guys have coconuts. Oh, you have a lot of coconut. Great. Mm-hmm. We will introduce a, co- a solar powered coconut milling machine or whatever it is. So you can mm-hmm. produce coconut this and then sell it to the to the town, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, so, oh, it's a fishing community. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. We're gonna introduce kind of. Uh, um, a chilling area where they can preserve the fish mm-hmm. and then the fish doesn't go off and they can sell it for higher price at a different time mm. when that season is not there, right? So we actually go in to understand how the, the those rural communities actually make money mm-hmm. or or what is their main GDP? That's what we call it. What's the GDP of that village? Literally. Mm, love that. Assess it from that level and then and then tell them capitalize on what you already have. We will just introduce the energy to make it more better. I love this. Do you know why my 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 data business intelligence brain is just pinging pinging right now? Really? Because, what were you? What, what's, what's because I'm you just like, thinking? do you know how rich that data is? It's huge. Because as you're going from community to community, you actually know economically whether they take advantage of it or not. You know what resources they have yeah. and what can be done and things like that. So yeah. it will be so good to be tracking. I'll know. I'll give you an example of a solution that we mm-hmm. we uh, we have two solutions actually. One is called Butcher Box and one is called Soko, mm-hmm. right? Butcher Box is literally people who are kind of serving uh, meat and mm. fish, right? It's like, look, they're in this community, the fish goes off and then the meat goes off and then they, they have a whole solar-powered cooling system mm. in there, right? And then we realized that, oh, not everybody can actually afford Butcher Box. So we ended up designing smaller systems mm. called Soko, which are like, you can pay monthly, it's more affordable. And then it's like, they, they now instead of them saying after the end of the day they just throw their goods away they mm. just preserve it and they start serving the next day amazing it's a huge impact I can because imagine. now it's becoming a way of life it's like you're showing them how to make money honestly right before I when we started we were talking let's just go ahead and like let's let's give people energy but it's like we realised that these guys don't even know what to do with energy mm. right so that's just the, the rural area but like some of that kind of affects more like me and you and yeah. you're living oh in the oh my gosh area. when I'm working and my just hit back and my computer goes off. I'll just be kissing my teeth all the time. Like, seriously. So so there's so many complexities to the urban area problems, right? Oh, man. It's government involved. There's policies involved. Mm. There's, um, there's individuals involved. Like, our mindset needs to change energy as well, right? Okay. Um, it's a lot of things involved. So I'll give you an example, right? In Nigeria, we know a lot of people have a short-term mindset. Oh, preach. It's so annoying, but yeah. Right? So short-term mindset. Right now, Two people can be doing the same business, right? Call them and quickly bring a short-term solution, charge mm-hmm. them X amount of money. Mm-hmm. And I can bring a long-term solution that will really solve the problem. They'll never have it again, right? But guess who they'll go with? The guy that brought the short-term solution. And then they'll still complain that the country is not good. Or they'll still complain that things are not getting better. But it's like the mindset is like, 
Why don't you just think more than one year? Why don't you just think? I have the, ex- oh, I love what you just said because I have the exact same mentality with my business. Right? Like literally, I'm like, if I'm coming into your business as a consultant, yeah, I'm putting in solutions that once I'm gone, you guys are gone. You you're can good. use it. Not something that does patchwork. Yeah. And then, so I agree with you 100%. It's, just, yeah. it's, so, it's all short term yeah, thinking. Yeah, 100%. And that, that, is, that is kind of ingrained into society. I really think that that's, like, it's a whole way of... You see in every aspect of life here. Every yeah. aspect of life. And you can mm-hmm. see why we're in this situation. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. really that mindset. Mm-hmm. So there needs to be a whole different way of changing that mindset. Mm. And a lot of the wealthier people have the longer term mindset, right? Mm. They invest in things that assets that are more, that last longer, mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. more robust to change mm-hmm. and all these things. But I feel that should be passed down to people who are less wealthy. Yeah. Um, solutions that we provide specifically are things that, that actually can last long mm. that's why our business is taking it takes a while to really like kick off but it's because you're providing quality and when you provide quality people need to kind of they, they it's foreign to them they don't understand quality because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's foreign it's like when you introduce something new it's like, okay that's very, that's another good psychological um concept as well it's mm. true for us to appreciate all these little techno- technology solutions that we get it's because we know what it's improving mm. but if you don't even know what it's improving you're not even going to appreciate it so that's appreciate very it. true they wouldn't even know what quality is so so it's important mm. there's a lot of education that's why education comes in and play a key mm. role because we have to we have to not only educate the customer mm. or educate the people we have to educate them support them give them everything that they need to feel comfortable making a decision mm. So you kind of broke down oil and gas to me a bit, mm. and I'm, I'm I'm I've actually learned a lot already. Talk to me about renewable energy because mm. when we were in school in London, I felt like in geography it was slowly starting to come in as a topic mm. to teach us about. They used to scaremonger us about in fifty years no oil is going to be left. Mm. Renewable. They talked about wind turbines, solar, all these kind of things. Mm. And from what I know about Pam Africa, you I know you do some things around solar. Yeah. So yeah, like what what is going on in that industry right now, especially in Africa? Okay, I think before I get into that, it would be worth just doing, mm-hmm. give some context into like mm-hmm. how we came about renewable energy in the first oh, place oh please yeah, right? yeah because yeah. it's kind of something that just for me I've, I've spent almost my whole life in mm-hmm. this stuff I started at the age of 11 actually building solar systems in Nigeria funny enough it's amazing right? and we then, need to attach the picture I think you showed me the yeah, picture yeah, one sure, time we'll sure. attach it yeah. yeah but but it's and, and I'm still doing that too today giving people electricity in Africa mm-hmm, right in different mm-hmm. areas and to understand the history of renewable energy we need to really understand like how energy had been perceived hmm. right so back in the day right energy was like firewood biomass right which is class- classified as renewable energy today right a lot of people were using the sun for a lot of things heating drying de- drying their the food mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. all these things so we were already using renewable energy mm. but guess what came to spoil everything oil we discovered oil and we yeah. just threw all our innovation and energy away, mm-hmm. we just literally just became so lazy mm. to to not to innovate on what we already have mm-hmm. that was good and safe. Mm-hmm. Why it's called renewable energy, renewable is because mm-hmm. it doesn't deplete. The sun, you can never finish using the sun, mm. right? You can never finish using wind. You can never finish using all these, all these resources. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's called renewable energy. And we just stopped. We got, we got, we found oil and we literally just stopped because oil came in we just put it, put one drop in, in, in something, burn it, and it lasts like five hours. And we're like, oh my God. So we don't have to wait till the sun is like all the way through the day to get this. Like, we just burn something and then we have everything dries up and mm. then we're using it in different things. And then obviously locomotion came in, which is cars and mm-hmm, all this, mm-hmm. all these things came in later on. And, and we started design, um, channeling everything to fit into the oil and, oil and gas paradigm. Mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. Now, Climate change was really what really pushed renewable energy to get to the stage it is at the moment, right? The fact that people were monitoring the average temperature in the world and realizing it was getting much more higher, which is true, mm-hmm. right? Um, debatable depends on what order. Yeah, what, I mean, we'll get onto that. I'll, I'm, we'll, we'll talk about that one in a yeah. second. Yeah. So, so, so to answer that question, renewable energy came from that kind of push. So, because of climate change, we couldn't burn a little more fossil fuel anymore mm-hmm. which is oil and gas mm-hmm. so then we decided to or the global elites decided to kind of push that uh, technology as a solution right, or, or series of technologies as a solution so you've got renewable energy is not just solar by the way you've got wind mm-hmm. you've got biomass which yep. is like um, 
kind of uh, burning like woods and stuff to create energy. Mm -hmm. um, you've got bioenergy, which is kind of more uh, um, oil and gas, but from more living things rather than things that are on, on the ground. Mm. Um, and then you've there's so much other, there's hydro, there's tidal, mm. which is more like water side, like mm -hmm. where you can get like energy from water and so forth. Um, so even in Nigeria, there's a huge amount of renewable energy. We use hydro, like there's dams mm. that actually provide electricity that we use today. So there's not like mm. it's, it's a foreign concept. Mm -hmm. It's just that people just never picked up into it because of the, how oil and gas sports the world, mm. right? Um, also improved the world. I wouldn't say sport, but like sport the world of innovation to mm -hmm. that area. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to learn about it. Uh, it's very interesting when you actually think about it, but yeah. I think that it's coming back. Yeah, definitely. And coming back in drones. Yeah. In drones. Um, I think by... 2050, mm -hmm. our reliance on ga on oil specifically mm -hmm. will deplete uh, significantly. I think less than 10%. Yeah, I mean, you see it right now. They're already, mm. Even the EU is being quite aggressive with their laws regarding um, things that use oil. Yeah, and even like cars. That. They're, they're talking about... They've outlawed... They've literally already outlawed... Um, yeah, and the end, um, of, end of combustion cars by 2035. Yeah, 20, yeah exactly, yeah. There's, uh, um, Africa is falling in the street. There's, uh, there's talks about 2050. I don't know, what they, I don't know what they're, how they're going to do that. Boy, so, right. so this is the problem <laughs> I have, right? This, 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 this is the... Okay, this is what pisses me off about this continent. This, this, this is the famous <laughs> argument. This is the famous <laughs> argument. The famous <laughs> argument is this, right? So your UK... You're listening to that now. It's, it, it, <laughs> you're the Europe and the Western world and we're <laughs> Africa, right? So you've now used oil and gas to build your world to this crazy, amazing stuff. And then you're now telling us that we can't use oil and gas anymore. Mm -hmm. All this to build, SDG. Um, to build well, our yeah, own world, yeah. right? So that's the argument, the counter argument to, to, the, to the renewable side of things in Africa. Mm -hmm. But it's all about, it's, and that's what's called the energy transition. So we're transitioning from the fossil fuel down to... Um, renewables and all this clean stuff mm -hmm. but the the thing is that we need to have a just transition it's called a just transition that okay. word just right it means that it has to be fair right and for it to be fair we need to consider the various things that the benefit that oil and gas does provide but also understanding climate change as well and thinking and driving to that innovation so what we said is the most polluting side of the fossil fuel sector mm -hmm. coal mm -mm. um oil mm. we're gonna phase that out but gas mm. we will still keep gas mm. and we'll match that with renewables mm, so mm. it will be gas and renewables going forward okay right and that's fair I, I think that's fair because at the end of the day we need a cheap way to make energy so that we can build on because renewable energy alone cannot take that's what i wanted to ask you about yeah all the needs that in the future needs right mm -hmm. we need a, a mixture of both it's called an energy mix mm. right so there's still need for, for mm -hmm. oil and gas, mm -hmm. but we need to be more just about it. Okay. Can I power, mm. let's say I have a five bedroom house, okay, me and my family. Mm. Can I power my whole house with renewable energy? 100%. My, 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 I mean, I don't have a five bedroom house, I have a two bed, but, mm -hmm. but it's fully powered by renewable energy Amazing. right now. Amazing. You can completely go off grid. There's communities that we built Amazing. that are all powered by solar right now in Africa. Right, hmm. that is in Nigeria specifically. That is like today incredible. But the the most important thing is that you need to understand that energy infrastructure is expensive. Yes, yeah. So if you now think about it, you're like, so right now I have to now pay for my energy infrastructure. Mm -hmm. In the UK, we don't think about it because we just pay the bills. Yeah, yep. we don't think about the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But the infrastructure is expensive, so that's why a lot of the times people are like, oh, this is so expensive. It's like, yes, but. Think about it's an your, investment. It's right? an investment. Your mm -hmm. your way of life will improve. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first moved to Nigeria and I, and I was reliant on the grid NEPA, which is the one that we, we the one that brings out to most people, right? Mm. I literally w was going through a mental challenging time. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I was going through a mental challenging mm. time, and it affected my work. Mm, oh. It affected my relationship with people. Of course, it did. It affected a lot of other factors yeah. that are so important to life. It damages productivity. So yeah. I don't care how much electricity is right it's fundamental yeah to people's lives especially so when you, you need had to it. invest in it yeah you do you need okay. to invest in ensuring that you have good supply of electricity for a two bed then oh um okay let's just say let's i want okay i want the five bedroom house mm. example how much would it cost is it only solar that we would use to power it or we would you use other things yeah uh, for now solar is the cheapest um renewable energy okay so if i have my five bedroom um, house other than wind and it was all renewable it would be solar mm. 
How much would it cost to power everything? Considering the fact that I have ACs, I obviously have the fully fitted kitchen, mm. the TVs and all that kind of stuff. How much would it cost to um, power my house? Mm. So how we analyze these things, and, I, and, and I'm going to be, I'm going to give you a theoretical Mm-hmm. kind of number but it's in a practical sense there are different things that goes into the house so okay. you might have a, a room where you have a, a studio and there's like five ACs and other things and it's not a conventional room 100% right so we normally say roughly mm-hmm. it's about a million naira mm-hmm. to kilowatts okay that's right? about roughly mm-hmm. and each room is roughly about a kilowatt two kilowatts depending on what you have okay Right. So if you have a five bedroom house, right, you're looking at about six, seven million naira mm-hmm. for that house. That's right? not bad. It's not bad. Wait, hold on. That's actually quite good. It's actually quite good. And people don't realize it's affordable when you when you think about the, the size of stuff that you do and the needs. Because if you look at the price of diesel right now, and, and one, another thing that we've actually introduced is that we actually introduced a financing option, just like the way you, you mm-hmm. can buy cars and split the payment over a long period of time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can just buy this stuff and just pay us monthly. So instead of buying paying diesel and maintenance for your generator and all the stuff, mm-hmm. you just come to us and we just sort that all is, of that for you. That's not as bad. The cost is not as bad as I um, thought it would it's, be. It's not as bad, especially when you when you split the payment out. Okay, so so the minute I've got solar panels in my house, what's the main what what happens? What are my other costs? Is there maintenance? Do I need to put anything? Like what what really happens after you, that? Your 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 operation and maintenance, especially with the PAM system, your operation is zero. Shout out to Pam Africa. Shout out to Pam Africa. <laughs> 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 uh, if you want to get assistance go to www.pamafrica.com uh, yes. P-A-M-Africa.com. no no seriously Amen because we that. need to solve this problem it, 100%. It's, it's really one of the biggest problems that's holding us back economically mm-hmm. power mm-hmm. no I agree with you I mean I'm preacher. I'm all mm-hmm. for productivity and it affects everybody it I mean, how affects can you be everybody. hiring staff and they tell you that there was no light there was no light that's not nice to hear boy and if you go to our office oh, you should really come to the office I'm, I'm hmm. going to invite you yeah, around, right? Yeah, if you go to the office right now the whole office is powered by solar <gasps> All the ACs can be on. We don't even care anymore. We need like, to video it. We'll video and add it to the episode. Literally. Yeah. Like, we don't really care anymore. So, it's it's that is very important. When what did you say the maintenance was, though? So, you said, if I've got that... It's zero maintenance for the first five years. Oh! Zero. You don't have to pay... You don't, we don't even come to your house because... We're that sure that nothing goes wrong. So well, you mean to tell me that I put solar panels on my house and I don't even need to do anything after the that? The solar panels itself is 25-year warranty. The, the panels itself. So on the roof, structural, there's no, you don't even need to touch it for 25 years. Mm. And if you live in an apartment block, how does that work then? Can I get it? So if you live it? in an apartment block, you have to, the only thing, you have to get a permit from the people who owns the building. Okay. If it's not yours, for the people who own the building, that, mm-hmm. this is what you want to to have in there mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. they allow you to have it right you go ahead and you can go off grid mm, that's amazing you can go off, no no it's actually a very good technology and the reason why now is a good time and now is the time that because this technology has always been there mm-hmm. right but now is a good time because it's at the point where we're getting towards grid parity grid parity means it's at the same price mm. as if you were to compare it with the totex the total cost of an of a generator or all these other source of power. Mm, it's the same price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's getting cheaper by the day, mm. right? So there's a lot of... Now it's, it's all about price. Once, it, once price hits parity, yeah. it, a solution makes sense. 100%. Right? And this is, is, is just about getting to that time now that it's hitting parity. And also it reduces, um, it adds productivity in more ways than you think because it's not just mm. about having constant light. It's about saving time, not going to collect diesel from the petrol exactly, station and yeah. all those kind of things. Yeah. Oh, that's um, that's so like interesting. Mm. And and it's, it's, it's just that there's... A, so, so I really feel like a lot would change mm. in Africa, especially in Nigeria. I know because I'm seeing the industry. Mm-hmm. And once we get power rights, I feel, I, it's literally a knock-on it's effect. It's a boom, yeah. So, it's a yeah. knock-on effect. Yeah. So, so shout out to the Nigerian government mm-hmm. actually recently. Okay. Um, yeah, they might get a lot of things wrong, but there's something <laughs> that they're getting right right now. And I really... I actually we, agree. We I think are shining light yeah. on it. Yeah, 100%. Right? They're getting the rural education right. Mm. they're really getting that right mm. so they've um, been able to kind of source some funding from different uh, organizations globally mm. and they're really challenging them to subsidize the cost of putting in these uh, solar systems in rural communities great great right? 
and and we're working a lot with them on on, on doing that. They're paying a lot on subsidy. Yeah, but so so. so because they have to, because people cannot afford these things. Like, if you don't, if you don't actually, and it's going to take a longer period of time before we educate people on how to use energy and all this. Thing. We have to give it them and then start going to those communities and start educating and working on it before it gets to a point that it, it becomes, it makes sense. The only problem with, with power in Nigeria is just financially, is an, as an investment, it's a difficult investment. Yeah, I literally um, was about to ask about mm. that. So the, the, so before I go about that, because I wanted to kind of look at even how you kind of value companies like that. Mm. But before that, I wanted to ask, what kind of businesses do you think can really benefit from solar power? Mm. For example, is it like a manufacturing um, facility? Mm. Or is it like, uh, is it maybe someone has like a car dealership? I know these are just random businesses, mm. but what kind of industries in particular do you think that they can value can be added by switching to solar mm. so so i think the, the, the simple answer is all business will, will be valuable because okay. we, we all face the power problem in nigeria it's not just mm-hmm. one business or the other right we all face it but when it comes to specific ones that will see significant growth yeah yeah are businesses which operate for 24 hours mm. longer period of time right businesses which they can't afford to have a downtime because that's one of the most important things giving you is giving you reliability servers I know there's no servers exactly. at the moment but yeah, yeah we data centers data centers right? right? yeah. manufacturing yeah. companies mm-hmm. all these things that always have to be on the go mm. they will value the, they will be the ones to value to get the value the most right the ones who actually have the, who gets the least values are the ones who actually do more more activities right now it's mm. fully weird which is individuals me and you at home mm. right we're the least ones that actually will need this thing because some people like can actually live without light for two or three hours and not it's fine. Me, not me, boy. Not us. <laughs> no. <laughs> but in Nigeria, yeah, it's literally like people don't even shake anymore. No, I used to off. it. I have a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> you know when I first came, I was supposed to go, when the light went off, I felt like I couldn't breathe. One I was my, like, so me right now, you're telling me I can't charge my phone. Like, that's weird. Right One of my friends said, she almost me, I felt so bad. She said, she just got back from traveling. She got back, there was no light in the house. So she just broke down and cried in the room. <laughs> <laughs> she just cried herself to sleep. She just told me this last month. <laughs> she was traveling the, traveling the world and got back. There was no light in her place. No, that's funny. I <laughs> can't survive the difference. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. No, you do know who I'm talking about. <laughs> that's why, yeah, me, I can't survive this kind of environment. So please, if you yeah, need that, services, that is, that is... <laughs> <laughs> I need to be able to afford electricity. That is, that electricity, you just sort that out. <laughs> even, if you, even if you start off with like, like an inverter fan system or mm. small solar. Just so, like when I first came here, I had this 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 portable system that we we made right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is is literally not too expensive. For less than two hundred dollars, you can buy it, mm-hmm. which is like quarter of the price of an iPhone, mm-hmm. right? And then you can like a small box. You can just have it next to your wall, and you have your internet connected to it. You have mm. your mobile phones and your laptop. So so even if they took the light, you still have internet laptop. So you can still work, right? So this is like something. Is that, that what you, an inverter does? Inverter does something similar, but like it's same technology, but that one is more smaller. Okay. So right now, inverter is more like um, for the whole house, oh, right? Okay, kind of okay, thing. Yeah. Okay. It's still similar technology. There's an inverter system in there, but it's mm-hmm. more smaller. So we, we're just thinking about like productivity. Mm. So for example, right? Let's look at a mobile phone. Your mobile phone has a very. I mean, yes, you, you can do a lot of productivity on mobile phone. You can talk yeah. to people. You can go on the website. You can go on the emails. Mm-hmm. But it's in a smaller package mm, right mm, mm. and then obviously let's now compare your mobile phone to a computer a computer is now the full-blown solar system which okay. is at home so I get it. it's like this we look at we understand each, each individual to understand okay what do you need to still remain productive mm. well how do you meet that with renewable energy mm. so we now look at that solution then scale it down to something that you can actually mm. use on a day-to-day and it's not too expensive and barrier to entry is easier yeah and then you just just get them to, be able to use so those things that this those those type of solutions go out like hot cake because it it solves their need immediately. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But for for to have a sustain sustainable growth and sustainable um, kind of lasting solution mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in for energy and Nigeria, we need to kind of address the the whole value chain. It's both mm. from the grid, right, and the power generation down mm. to distribution, down to the homes, mm. even the way. So we're, we're introducing something uh, recently called the uh, Net Zero Villages. Okay. Where literally the whole village is, is, is powered by uh, renewable I energy. I love that, Net Zero Villages. Yeah. Hmm. 
So what net zero means is like the amount of emissions generated in that village mm -hmm. is less than the amount of emissions of offsets in that village, like in power coming from renewables. So there's a lot of innovation that Power Africa is working on that's like absolutely mind bending. Okay, we've talked about houses and stuff. Mm. Could solar ever power my phone or my car? Or if it comes to things like that, is it? I know like a car, they're going for electric vehicles, but what else could solar kind of power apart mm. from somebody's house? Let me give you a quick statistics right now. Mm -hmm. In the summertime, which is a very similar solar radiance, solar radiance, like the amount of sunlight hitting the UK, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, is very similar to that in summertime that as is in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. In summertime in the UK, half half of the energy that is being used in the whole of the UK mm -hmm. is provided by renewable energy. Oh, now as we speak right now, mm. right now. So that means that it can power anything. If half of the UK is powered by mm. by renewable energy in the, in the summertime. You can see wind turbines in the UK. That's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So there's nothing. There's literally nothing that okay. they can't power. I mean, if we're really bullish about it, we should really enforce, like, plans to to really accelerate that growth mm -hmm. in, in Nigeria specifically. And there's... Mm -hmm. Nigeria recently launched the Energy Transition Plan, which is, like, last month. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually commissioned by the Vice President. Uh, Professor Yemi Osimato. Mm -hmm. And it actually highlights that uh, Nigeria would still think about gas, but will phase out oil by 2050. Mm -hmm. Right? Ma majority <laughs> depending on, it's going to be, the country is going to be majority depending on, on, on solar. Mm -hmm. Right? We, they should really look at wind though, because wind is very good, but major, mainly solar. Solar mm -hmm. and gas is going to be the two key technologies going forward. Mm -hmm. Um, they also talked about kind of a drive for electric vehicles as well. Right? They're going to start, start trying to push the electric vehicle agenda <laughs> here as well. I beg they should just go and relax. <laughs> You're not going to be driving your GLE no yeah, more. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to be driving your GLE no more. All, all, all the stunting, you, just, <laughs> you have to go and pick up one Tesla. <laughs> no, nah, I mean like, do you know what it is for me about that topic? It's mm. like, there's a whole infrastructure aspect towards EV vehicles. A, and they and, haven't got and it And that's right. what really irritates me because even let's take the UK, for example, as someone that drove on the motorway a lot because of where I lived, even implementing smart highways, because that's mm. what they need to do. Mm. You have to have lanes that you can like charge in. Mm. You need to have charging infrastructure. There needs to be range on the vehicles mm -hmm. as well. If I'm having an elect uh, um, electric vehicle, I need to make sure that I can go at least 200 kilometers. Mm. If I'm driving to Manchester, I don't want to have to stop over to charge. Yeah, yeah. I want to be able to do the full range, even there and back. So all this talk and outlawing, I just think it's a bit premature. Like, let's actually have a plan yeah. and, you know, and phase in the infrastructure. And that's even me speaking for the UK. When you're dealing with Nigeria, it's like, can you just guys just focus, focus on the on here one and thing now? first. Focus on power first. I get it. But, you know, it's, it's becoming, tan in, it's, it's, it's having a, it's in tandem mm. right now. Both of them. Mm -hmm. Electric mobility and, and electricity is in tandem because, okay. It's very similar concepts, similar ideas, similar technologies, mm -hmm. similar skill sets, uh, actually, as well, required to kind of deliver on both, mm -hmm. right? So you can roll them out roughly at the same time. Yeah. If you're getting, if you're really doing infrastructure of, for, for power. So I did a lot of um, research on um, electric vehicles in the UK. Mm hmm a lot like we did like to a significant level mm -hmm. and we actually I, I would say I'm probably one of the few people that are responsible for the large growth mm. of electric vehicles in the UK because mm. yeah. we did a, a lot of consultancy work with the government on ensuring that there's right policies put in place amazing uh, right, the right technology is being selected mm -hmm. for, for that and we've seen that growth increase significantly right mm -hmm. and I, every time I see electric vehicle in the UK I'm just like mm, yeah that's because of me. Mm. I'm happy about that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's good. And we need to get some... That's why mm. one of the things I moved to Nigeria because I know that wave is coming. I'm just waiting for it. It's 100% coming. But the reason why it's going to come is going to be fueled by the individual market. I don't think the government is going to want to feel it. I think individuals are going to be the one wanting that system. Why? Because it's cheaper. If you look compared to the price of 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 uh, of once things are cheaper, hum, human beings will drive towards it. But don't you need um, constant electricity first before you can have EVs? So this is the thing. So let's say hypothetically we solve the power problems, mm -hmm. right? The next step is that individuals, literally everyone, will have an EV. 
Mm. Because unless we're doing significantly, we're doing some significant refining. Let's say that, that Dangote refinery is up and petrol prices are literally peanuts. Mm, 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 right? mm, mm. But if that's not there, if it's still at the current prices that petrol prices and we're still subsidizing, you know, we're still subsidizing petrol because Nigerians can't afford that. No, they just paid, they just paid the payment last week, exactly. a big payment last year. Right? Yeah. So if those things are still going on, mm -hmm. EVs will come and take over because let's say the price for to fuller electric vehicle is one pound okay roughly mm -hmm. so one pound will give you about 200 miles wow let's compare that to petrol mm. right 200 miles is about 70 pounds yeah yeah so one to 70 mm -hmm. the difference okay are the, are the vehicles themselves cheaper or more expensive the vehicles themselves are becoming to get to the same price for a new vehicle okay now, you know, Nigeria doesn't buy a lot of new vehicles. No, the market is literally like... And yeah, we saw that sheet, that, that, that picture the other day. Mm -hmm. all of, all of that, the fifth or sixth most imported things into Nigeria, one of them is cars. It's cars, yeah. And a, a majority of those are actually used cars. Yeah, they use cars, yeah. Right? So when you think about the, the, the car market, people love cars. Yeah. People love cars. I do, boy. I love cars, man. I'm a, used, <laughs> I'm a BMW fan. <laughs> Sports Plus. All right, Sports Plus. <laughs> 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 people love cars so mm. because people love cars here yeah, mm. they're going to end up end up finding a way to move uh, move around and, and make it more affordable mm. so the the used electric vehicle market is going to be very interesting mm. because one thing about electric vehicles right electric vehicles deteriorate deteriorate more uh, less than a combustion vehicle because mm. there's less moving parts mm. Mm. there's only a, there's only a battery mm. and a couple of wheels Lithium, lithium batteries. Yeah, lithium batteries. Lithium, so yeah, and and let's say for example, you look at the uh, the 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 size of the of the batteries, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say if you're charging your phone, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and when you buy a phone new, your 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 batteries a lot, and then later on that it gets down, it gets lower down and right, right? So with electric vehicles, it's not the same. These batteries are actually much more robust. So if even if you bought a new, you drove for like five years. You, you still have about 80% of that battery capacity left. That is going to significantly change the value of second-hand vehicles. Change though. the value of second-hand vehicles. That's why electric vehicles in the UK, second-hand, are still expensive. And that's going to deteriorate the price of combustion vehicles rapidly. Significantly. Literally, combustion vehicles right now are valueless. Especially that's with that ULES, silly ULES exactly, law. Exactly. See how diesel car just went down in price in London? You can go and buy a, a mad Jaguar mm. diesel for less than £2,000 in London right now. Mm. They're moving all this stuff to Africa. Mm. They're moving all the way here because we we see more value in them because mm. we don't have those regulations that. Mm -hmm. So all these few, listen, you're in the future, literally next five to six years time, mm -hmm. you'll be in an African country, right? And you will see so much fumes, you wouldn't be able to breathe. I'm already And then you go to UK Gosh. and it will be, air will be so clean. I'm already getting asthma from the mainland. God forgive me. And As it stands already. Exactly. So that is already a problem. Because right now we come to Nigeria, we think that electricity is a problem. We're, we're going around going crazy. Imagine being born and used to an environment that the air is always clean because of everyone's driving an electric vehicle, mm. and then you now move to another place and it's just dirty, fumes everywhere. Mm. You mentally you can't live there. But how well are these car manufacturers doing? Because when I used to in, in one of my old jobs, mm. um, when I was in equity research, I kind of looked at the car industry. And at the time, there was this big talk about EVs. I was studying all that. And when I looked at the top manufacturers, especially the German ones in particular, mm. the Japanese ones have been quite good because um, brands like Lexus and Toyota have always had hybrid vehicles for quite a while. Mm. But the German brands, I don't think their adoption and manufacturing of EVs is as fast as some of the other companies. Is it being better now? or? Yeah, so so the German the German companies were slow to yeah, react they were slow, yeah. to, to the electric vehicle mm -hmm. uh, uh, change, and part of the reason why is they were already the best at what they did. Yeah, so it's hard that innovation doesn't doesn't jump in bounds. Mm. It's kind of incremental, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, but what really what really fast tracked that was the growth of Tesla. Let's just be honest with you, right? Mm. What Elon Musk did was really good. He he really kind of spent some time to, to develop a product that people want, like the way Apple developed a product that people like. And fast track the innovation for electric vehicles, right? Now, 
even the, 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 the they had they were they were shaking in their offices in the boardrooms they were like mm. oh my god we're going to lose a lot of market because people are loving these cars mm. they, they they're making changes we need to start responding but they started responding slowly but they still got there i mean they, i think they're just about there now but they still not, they still don't have the market cap yet but they still got there what they did was they started introducing hybrid vehicles yep. first yeah and they take a lot of time on this innovation so they're more, they, their approach is very British and conservative. It's like, you know, you can go ahead and innovate. We'll watch you fail. <laughs> and then we'll come back with a solution that actually people want, right? So, so it's like, okay, cool. You go ahead with all the smart mm. ideas, try it out. But the mistake that happened or, or something that really uh, saved them was mm. Tesla did not fail. Mm. Tesla did not fail. And it's like, okay, so we just have to accept defeat. And just introduce an electric vehicle. So now they all have electric vehicles in the line. Mm-hmm. BMW has an electric vehicle in the line. The mm-hmm. i8. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have the the the, the iX now. Mm-hmm. I even had the i3 a while mm-hmm. ago. That's an electric vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, Audi has an electric vehicle now. They've got the e-tron l- range. Okay, that's right? true. They look ugly. Um, exterior looks ugly, but yeah. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why they made them so but, but they've got the e-tron gt which is like the ra a little bit they used to look all oh, they those cars used to look gorgeous back in the day gorgeous. they were more rounded yeah. now the exterior is too sharp. boxy yeah yeah, yeah. It's, they're going with the kind of lamborghini aesthetics mm-mm, right mm-mm. yeah um mercedes has an electric vehicle so they've got the mm. new eqs shout out to mercedes shout out to mercedes they're number one mm. you like mercedes okay i don't know i just feel like they're my number one i think they get exterior and interior right yeah no, no i like Whereas the, interior. the the other yeah, ones is like my only issue with bmw is like they literally don't change their exterior the, a bmw from 2003 the same, yeah. <laughs> it, and, and and that's the thing it's it's more it's a bmw's are uh driver cars that they're, mm. they're, they're literally for drivers like yeah like they the way a BMW you. feels when you're driving is completely different to any other car and mm. you can't explain why. Mm. Right? Mm. I've even tried to kind of understand it a little bit more but I just can't. It's like they just know how to design the chassis like mm. the way the body feels on the road. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I feel BMWs are really terrible at is the interior. I think the interiors are terrible. Yeah. I think the yeah. interiors are and they need to improve it. But anyways, there's a lot of people introducing electric cars but yeah. what's actually going to shock the world is what the Chinese are doing. Okay. They are introducing cheap Electric cars, less than five thousand dollars. Hmm. Because the kings of manufacturing, boy. Less than five thousand dollars electric cars that can go at least one hundred and fifty miles on a wow. charge. These cars are going to be everywhere in Africa, mm-hmm. everywhere because we love cheap stuff. <laughs> Not me, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about like the average, <laughs> I average know, I know. <laughs> so not me, boy. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You know, like mm. they're gonna be everywhere. So if we're smart about it, it's, even a, the, it's the, the affordability and the practicality of those vehicles. Affordab- it's insane. Yeah. One of my friends, he runs an electric car company in Kenya. Shout out to Kiri EV, Chris. Okay. I see you. Nice. He builds. Uh, he builds electric two wheelers, like the bikes, electric. And you know, there's bikes everywhere in Africa. Like these guys are gonna sell in drones. But the only thing I have is they still we need the infrastructure because if the battery does die, how am I going to charge it if I'm on the way to Bono? I'm in the middle of an expressway to yeah, Bono so State and there's nowhere to charge exactly. it. Exactly. So 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 currently at Prime Africa we build what we call mini grids. Okay. Right. Mini grids are like they're a um, you, you get a piece of land. Yeah. And you put a bunch of solar panels on that land. Yeah. Right? And then you provide electricity to a community, just a, a secular community. Yeah. And we have these grids dotted out in different locations in Africa right mm-hmm. now, right? In the future, right, we're going to introduce charging networks that will be next to those mini grids. Okay. So, for example, you're driving your bike, you can just go, park it, mm-hmm. plug. In fact, even you just go there, swap, put a charge battery that's fully charged, take it out, put it in the bag, put another charge battery and keep it going. Right, mm. so people are already like the whole model around transport is changing, and we're innovating that model. Mm. We're thinking about different ways where not only is it convenient, but it's also affordable and it's in a, and it's significant innovation. Mm. So that's part of the whole net zero village mm. agenda, right? Mm. Mm. But these things are not are not kind of ready now. The technology is ready now, but it requires a lot of financing. Mm. It requires a lot of changing perceptions. I need to convince riders. To go and take an electric vehicle. I need to convince them that you should go and top your batteries here. It, you need to build it all the way from the ground up, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. You can't just put a technology out there and think people will use it. They don't, 
they, they're not going to use these things. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. You have to. Sh- you have to. I need convincing, boy. I know that. Exactly. Even mm-hmm. you need convincing. You're very intelligent. Yeah. Imagine people who are not intelligent. Yeah, you. I need. Yeah, I need convincing. Yeah. So, so there's it's a, it's a problem that it's mm-hmm. going to take us years. Mm. It's going to take us a while, and it's a journey. It's not a. Mm. I'm not going to complete it. I'm hopefully that someone picks it up from where I stop mm. and, and continue that journey, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it has to be done, and it's going to be done. Yeah. So mm. you just say. It's just about okay. How do we now ensure that it's done in the right way, ethically? Mm-hmm. Ensure that we don't, we're not hundred percent depending on the rest of the world. We need to manufacture these things as well, mm-hmm. right? When we're thinking about these things, mm. um, there's a lot of a lot of thought that's going into that that side of the work. So there's there's different components that that is that is going to change the landscape of Africa. It's just, we just hope and pray that this currency just stays stable because a lot of these things are reliant on like, imports. That's my only issue, yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. To learn imports. Wow, that's a very insightful conversation. I've learned yeah. a lot, definitely. It's a good intro. Definitely want to speak about this again. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. And definitely, no, I, mm. I mean, this... That's just one 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 part of the infrastructure equation. Mm. You can talk about water, you can talk about food mm. networks. Mm-hmm. Agriculture, yeah. Um, what's that book that you, you said today again? That I see money book. in Africa. I see money in Africa. Mm-hmm. Good book if you want to get some business ideas. Yeah. I was just reading that one. Also, one of my of favorite ideas. books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so we'll be covering that. that book a lot mm. more um, in future episodes. Definitely. Thanks, Doctor. No, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. This is the first time I actually talked about what I do. You know, yeah, in, in, that's good. In great length. Definitely. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>